My guest tonight fought his way to glory with a relentless determination and an unwavering drive, becoming one of the most decorated and beloved boxers of his generation. Since his time at the East Side Boxing Gym in Los Angeles, Oscar De La Hoya has faced every challenge, earning over 200 amateur victories, an Olympic gold medal, and 10 world boxing titles in six different weight classes. But before he was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, did you know he won his first fight when he was in second grade, sparred with the boxing legend Julio Cesar Chavez as a teenager, dreamed of becoming an architect when he wasn't in the ring. Tonight, we'll learn what makes this undeniable icon who he is, a man who once said, I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror and know I took everyone on. Please welcome the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. How are you? All right, I'm great, thank you. When's the last time you got punched? Um, I think yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yeah. last night. Do you miss it? Well, there's nothing more beautiful than knocking somebody out. I mean, <laughs> I swear, I, it sounds weird, but I mean, obviously in the ring. Um, when you land that perfect punch. What does that feel like? Oh my gosh, um, how can I describe it? <sighs> Let's see, have you played, you play golf? So when you have that perfect, you know, just nine iron or... But it feels like nothing? It feels like if nothing happened, you know, because it's effortless. Yeah. Um, you trained all your life to get that, to land that perfect punch. Um, yeah, it feels beautiful. It really does. What was East L.A. like mid-70s, late-70s? Um, I mean, growing up in East L.A., I, I remember it being... Um, I remember it being just a lot of fun, you know, um, innocent. We had this, like our entertainment was boxing. Like the uncles, all the uncles amongst each other would put on gloves and, and actually fight in, in the, inside the garage. Yeah, it was hilarious. I mean, that was our, that was our entertainment. And so until one, until one time, my, one of my uncles uh, said, wait, why don't we put the little kids to fight? And I'm thinking, oh my God. How old are you? I'm like, I'm like five years old. I'm like, literally, I'm five, five, six years old. So I'm like, you know, trying to like not be seen and in the corner, <laughs> you know, and going to the corner and, you know, and I was scared. So I remember putting on the gloves, being petrified. And my cousin, uh, my cousin George, he, uh, he punches me with a right hand that, oh my God, I, right in the nose and I start crying. Because, I mean, imagine, I'm five years old. So I start crying. I run to my father. And, and the first thing he tells me is, um, is uh, don't cry. You know? I remember that. I remember those words, like, just don't cry. And so I remember him saying to everyone, uh, just wait. Give me one year. I'm going to take him to the gym. And we're going to come back <laughs> and spar the same little cousin that punched you. Was there any chance that you weren't going to be a boxer? Uh, no, there was no chance. No chance whatsoever. I, Did you I feel was, like you had to? Um, I was, yeah. I mean, you can say I was forced into it. Absolutely. Um, the fact that my father was a fighter and my grandfather was a fighter. Um, yeah, I had no choice. What kind of father did you have? I had, um, I had a father who, who, was, who was very devoted and dedicated to taking care of his family, you know? Um, although he was a very tough, um, kind of tough love, you know, like you knew he loved you, but he could never express it, you know? But how important was it to build a bond with your dad that like we're always seeking approval? Yeah. You know, you want love. Absolutely. And it's tough love, but are you searching for just regular love, real love from your dad? And um, does boxing help? Well, that. it's 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 interesting because um, I, I I still am, I still in a certain way in in a, in a weird way I still am like I I haven't heard those words like son I'm proud of you I haven't heard them I know he is man it feels like a therapy session here I'm sorry uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, you have any napkins <laughs> I do <laughs> yes I do oh boy here we go ah. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, so it's like, in a sense, I'm still, I'm still looking for that approval that, you know, that I did okay. What kind of mom did you have? Strong. She was strong. She was, she was the backbone of the family. Um, very lovable, you know, the total opposite of my father. Um, she, she would, she would show me how much, uh, how much she loved me. I mean, to a point where, you know, you're a little kid in school and she would show up in class just to give me a hug, you know, <laughs> you know and, and you would be like all embarrassed and like, mom, you know? um, yeah, she was, she was amazing. She gave me, she gave me a lot, a lot of love. Your sister told me that mom was the life of the party. Yeah. yeah that she was she a was. singer. She was just effervescent. She was, she was a professional singer. And, and um, so I remember my mother always uh, singing around the house, um, just always being happy, no matter what. She was always happy. I mean, we literally lived in a home um, probably the size of this stage, um, you know. And I remember her always cleaning. I mean, she would clean 24-7. I, I tell her, Mom, like, what are you cleaning? There's, like, there's no dust there anymore. But she was that type of lady that wanted to make sure that her family was happy, that we lived in a nice, clean environment, um, always gave us love. Um, I always thought that she was, um, she was a woman who, uh, I guess, wanted to gave, give us the love that my father yeah. kind of didn't give us, you know, yeah. uh, and make up for it. So, yeah, she was, she was always, uh, she was just very joyful and very, I remember, always coming back from school when I was a kid, she uh, w would always be singing and I would sing with her. Were you mama's boy? Yes and no. Yes and no. You know, because see what boxing taught me was, boxing taught me to be, to be proud, to be, to, to hold my head up high, to, uh, to be a little, a little tough, you know? Um, so even though my mother was always very, just gave us a lot of, hugs and kisses and, and a lot of love. I sometimes would be like a little standoffish, like, uh, like, you know, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my little friends or this and that, you know, so, but bo that's what boxing taught me. You have to be tough. You have to be a little macho kid, you know, that, that, that is not going to be softened up by, you know, by hugs and kisses and so. What were your goals with boxing? Like, when did you set them? I believe it was like nine years old. I won a national boxing tournament. And right there and then, I said to myself, you know what? I can maybe do something with boxing. I have a poster that I signed. It was my first autograph that I gave to myself. <laughs> I signed it, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, um, 1992 Olympic gold medal champion. And I had it on, the, uh, on my garage. What we, we used to sleep in the garage. I had it in my wall there, the garage wall. Um, and that was my motivation. That was my everything. Every single day that I had to wake up in the morning at around 4.30 in the morning to go run the streets of East LA. I mean, 4.30 in the morning, my father would wake us up. He would kick the garage door and wake us up or wake me up and, uh, and I would go running. And that was my goal. That was my dream to, to win the Olympic gold medal. Did you feel like you were missing out on a childhood? Um, yeah, I did. I did actually. Because um, everybody else is doing all the fun things. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's... I mean, I, I missed out on everything. I, I didn't have a chance to do anything. I mean, to play in the streets with my friends, um, um, you know, so it was, yeah, I missed out on a lot. Why are you in the garage? Just um, like a space in the house? Yeah, but we didn't have enough space. Um, we didn't have, we rented a, we rented a little uh, home and it was tiny um, and it had a little garage. And so me and my brother, my older brother, we converted that little place into our, our bedroom. Did you know you were poor? No, no. Isn't that the beauty of what parents do yeah. sometimes is that they shield you from something that you don't know what you don't have. Right, I mean, we had, we had food on the table. Um, we, had, um, we had clothes to wear. Food stamps? Yeah, we had food stamps. Um, and uh, and we, had, we had government help. I remember looking forward to, uh, we would call it a quesadilla night because uh, the blocks of cheeses that we, like every two weeks, <laughs> yes, it was pretty cool. We would, we would look forward to it so much because um, every 15th of the month, a uh, big block of cheese would come and we would eat quesadillas for like days, you know? And, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, 
grilled cheese sandwiches. And so it was, it was pretty cool. We were just, we were happy. We were, we were just innocent, you know? It's, our, you're right, our parents shielded us from, from, from not knowing that, uh, that uh, you know, we, that we were, I guess, I guess I can say we were a little below poverty level or, you know, it was, it was, it was tough at times. But I would always tell myself, one day when I make it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, 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 and get my family, um, you know, to, to a better place, a better environment, I guess, or a, a nicer home or, you know. You get to be 15, you win uh, Junior Olympics, gold gloves. Yeah. So yeah. now what are you thinking? I'm, I'm now thinking at 15 years old, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I mean, this is, this is going somewhere. This, this is, okay, I'm winning national titles. I'm traveling the country. Um, I'm now being scouted by the Olympic Committee. And so now I'm thinking, wow, my dream my, my, is getting closer and closer and closer. Like, I can see it. You know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel here. And so um, I work even harder. So you get an opportunity to get in the ring with Julio Cesar Chavez. I had just turned 15 years old. I believe he was in a fight. Um, he was preparing himself for uh, Maldrick Taylor, which was an amazing, amazing fight. So they called us to spar with him. And Julio Cesar Chavez's sparring sessions, I mean, it's kind of like a circus. It's funny because he'll have like a thousand people there. He'll have mariachi playing. He'll have, I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. So he hits me with that right hand. Dan, I swear, I've never been hit harder in my life. He is, I mean, that's why he was like the, the greatest of all time. I mean, this guy, this guy was the best. How does that help you assess your, your skills, that you get that chance at that age? It's, uh, I mean, you can't buy that. You, you just cannot buy that experience. And uh, yeah, when they called us over to spar with him, I, I knew he was, Chavez the legend. I knew he was 20 pounds heavier than me. I knew that he can knock me out whenever he wants to knock me out. But the chance was just, uh, was just uh, an unforgettable experience. So I, I obviously said, yes, I, I have to do this. So. Your mom gets cancer as you get ready to make the Olympic team? Yeah, uh um, it, was, it was a few months. Um, so my mother was a very proud woman, right? And um, I remember the exact moment when she, when she told me that she had cancer. And that was, only, that was only like a month before she passed away. Her last words were, um, you know, the more, the more you have, the more you have to give back. And her last words again were, you know, go win the gold. Go win that gold medal for me. So now it's 1992 and now I have to go to the Olympics and fulfill her dream and her goal. And so uh, it, it was a heavy weight on my shoulders, you know? Because imagine, I was only 17, I think. I had just turned 17. And back in the day, um, so NBC was like uh, doing the whole Olympics and, and it was a huge deal. Like boxing was a huge deal. And so the focus was on me and my story with my mother that passed away and the dream that I can fulfill if I win the gold for her. And so all eyes were on me. And so the weight, the pressure that I felt at, at that age was, oh my gosh, it was, it was so, it, it was too much. I mean, there was times when, there were times when I would break down and cry um, because it was so much pressure. And so I remember in 1991, okay, before she passed, I went to the world championships uh, in Australia. And to win a gold medal there, you have to fight like five times. And the very first fight that I, that I competed in, I lost it against a German kid. Marco Rudolph. Marco Rudolph. Uh, he was a German kid and he beat me and I was devastated. I was like, oh my gosh, now, you know, I, I, my dreams are crushed and I, my, how am I going to win the Olympic gold medal now? This kid is better than me. What did that loss, that first loss, do to you? Um, I remember locking myself in the room and staying in there for like, uh, for the duration of the, of, the, of the tournament. I think it was like eight days. I didn't come out. Um, I, I remember uh, receiving phone calls to my hotel room um, and being afraid to pick up the phone because my family was calling and I was thinking that I can't do it. Thinking that, you know, you put all these blocks in front of you 
you know, and, um, and you try to sabotage yourself. Um, and so front forward to the Olympics, I get there, I fight, I fight um, uh, Africa, I fight uh, 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 Japan, I fight Brazil, um, Cuba, and I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, where's Germany? You know, like what's going on here? Like, did he get eliminated already? So I'm getting ready for the gold medal round. I have no clue who I'm gonna fight. I get up to the ring and I look across the ring and it's Marco Rudolph, <laughs> the German kid. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm petrified thinking that I'm gonna lose. Who's going to take it? Who wants to go more? This is Olympic fighting in its best. Remember, oh, perfect now shot. Goes Rudolph. And what a dramatic finish this is gonna be for the story of the Olympic boxing. There's the bell. And from East Los Angeles, McDonald Avenue to Barcelona, the De La Hoya celebration is underway. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Got down wow. on your knees, looked up upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so since my mom passed, um, what I would do is um, I, I would do the sign of the cross and then, you know, kind of like thank my mom like for looking out for me. So that's... Explain what that feels like because all of the emotions going into it, now you've finally done it. So what, what's it feel like to be an Olympic champion? Well, you know, when I was, when, when I was on, the, on the podium, okay, um, and they were playing the national anthem, and there's no feeling better than, I mean, just listening to the national anthem and, and getting, putting a gold medal around you, there's no better feeling. But I was numb. And I remember going, going down to get interviewed and uh, this gentleman reporter tells me, so Oscar, how does it feel winning the gold for your mother? And oh my gosh, my heart just like, I started crying so hard. I couldn't give the interview because I was crying so hard. And, uh, and, and I mean, that's when, that's when I realized, wow, I did it. I, I did it for her and uh, yeah, it's the, most, the best moment of my life ever. Did you go visit mom's grave then? Um, I remember I got on my knees. I, I had the gold medal around me. I would carry that gold everywhere, everywhere. It was funny. Um, it was kind of like my ID, you know, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. Um, and so I would, I would I'd put it down and um, yeah, and I just started crying. And I talked to her and I told her, I told her, man, if, if, if only you were here, you know, physically. And so, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty special moment. What did Dan say? Uh, I think he said, good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he said, good job. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool that I can laugh about it because um, I mean, my dad's the best. He's, 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 just, he's just like that. He was, he's built that way, you know, so. But the beautiful part is, is that I, I know that he, he's, he's, a, he's a sensitive man. He's a, he's a loving man, um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he said, he said, good job, son. The bidding war starts. Yeah. Because you're valuable to the United States, to Mexico. Now all of a sudden, you know, Madison Avenue goes, we got something here. Yeah. Back then, you know, there's answering machines and you can rewind them <laughs> and you play them. And... So I remember I, I played these this message and, uh, and uh, I hear, uh, hey, Oscar, uh, this is your good friend, Don King. I'm like, oh my God, the Don King. Uh, Oscar, I can make you champion. I can make you a lot of money and millions and this and that and only in America. And, uh, <laughs> and it was hilarious. It was so funny. I, I wish I would have kept that message, but it was so funny. And so I remember promoters knocking on our door. I remember, I mean, it, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, tons of people just wanting for me to turn pro because, yeah, like you said, there, there's something there. I, 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 was, I was born here. I have Mexican roots. I can speak Spanish and English. Um, and they're throwing some big money around. Yeah, they were throwing big money. And so, I, yeah, I turned pro and I told myself only one world title and that's it, I quit. Just one world title, just to see how it feels. And uh, that's the only goal you had as a pro. Yeah, that's the only goal I had. And then you start out, you go 10 and 0. So now yeah. all of a sudden there's talk. Maybe it's time to, you know, get a title shot. Exactly. Here. So which is quick. I was I was on a fast track. Um, they had me on a fast track. Now I'm fighting. 
on the wide world of sports. I'm fighting uh, on national TV. At this, at this stage of my career, I mean, it just, in, in today's world, it just doesn't happen. You know, it's, 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 it's too soon. You have this fight with Jimmy Bredahl. Was your approach any different going into a title fight than it was going into winning the gold medal? Um, I had less pressure now. I had less pressure because I guess it wasn't, I didn't expect myself to win a world title. You know, I didn't put that much pressure on myself. Did you think you could lose that fight? Um, no. Oh, no. okay. I didn't, I didn't think I could lose that fight. I was, um, I, I, was, I, was, I was always very focused, you know? I always thought very, I, I, I was very positive when I turned professional because um, I was a hard worker. I was very, very disciplined. I mean, I was the type that I go to sleep at 8 p.m., you know, and wake up at 3.30, like every single day. That's, that, that was my life. That was my, my passion, you know? So I, I, always felt, uh, I always felt invincible up in that ring. Here's how it looked. It's probably his most dangerous punch. The younger guys, when they are good punches, have a tendency to taste the guy's power. Oh, look at the grin from De La Hoya as he drops Bridal with one right hand. And that's the first time Bridal's ever been on the canvas. Keep him working hard. What did I just say? <laughs> and the doctor here says, enough. De La Hoya has now won the first of his world championship. How'd that feel, though? Oh, All amazing. done? Getting I'm hoisted? Done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I won my world title. I, I'm happy. That's it, guys. We're calling it a day. Um, I remember going to like uh, a, 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 an organized party that my family threw for me, and and I'm I said my speech. I remember it. I said, "Hey guys, I'm done. That's it. You know, it, it feels great." But once you win one world title, my gosh, you want more <laughs> and more. Yeah. So so it's addicting. It's it's addicting because this is my life. This is what I know. And uh, the next day, no, the next day I actually wanted more. Cool stuff. How important was it to set the new record of getting titles in six different weight classes? Um, well, that was, that was my next goal. So after you win your first title. After I win the first. And it's important to win it at 130 because you know you're going to add weight. Right, exactly. So Sugar Ray and, and, and Hearns were the ones that I, I had to go after, you know. Like, I want to beat their record. So that was my, that was my next goal in boxing is to, is to try and beat the record. Explain how difficult that was going to be. Well, the guys are getting the guys are getting bigger. The punches are a lot harder. Um, you're getting older, and you're facing guys that are younger. Um, it's, I mean, the first battle is always the training because one thing that a lot of people don't know is that for every fight that I that I have, I would seclude myself up in the mountains in Big Bear for three whole months. I mean, you have to stay on on a strict diet. You have to wake up early in the morning. You have a, you have a team of people now from doctors, um, from nutritionists, to you name it, who are taking care of you, who are, who are literally building a machine, you know, to, to get in the ring and, and, and win a fight. Were you allowed to sneak anybody in or have some? No, no. One thing about Like you're celibate for three I'm months. Not, yeah, you have to be. You have to you be. You don't have to I, be. Well, you don't have to be, but I, I mean, I, I was. I was. Um, yeah, they say that, I mean, fighters can have, hey, can have sex for three months. Tough, but, uh, but doable. Tough, but doable. Yeah, I was very, very disciplined. Did very you ever break that discipline? A uh, couple times. <laughs> A couple times. You sell out the garden. Right. Which is pretty incredible. Um, at the time, I believe it was a fighter by the name of Jesse James Leha. That's pretty big stuff. It's, it's big because, I mean, I was, I'm this kid from East L.A. Like, what are you doing selling out the garden, you know? I mean, that's, that, that was my mentality. Like, that's, that's how I thought, you know? How do you keep your wits about you? Like, you know, that you're being, you got all this money. You're, you're you know, buy what you want. You're a star. Women throwing themselves at you. Yeah. Because there's no handbook that says this is how you deal with fame. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody taught me that. Nobody, I had to learn on my own. And, and I'll tell you one thing, Dan. Um, there were some very dark moments in my life. 
I, I was, it, it was not all, it's, it was not all, you know, peaches and cream. You know, it, it was, it was, it was difficult. It was tough. I had to learn the hard way. What was dark about it? You, you, you lose yourself, you know? You, you, you immerse yourself in this world that is not real. It's fake, it's, it's fake, it's make-believe. Did you medicate yourself? Like yeah, absolutely. you sort of self-medicate oh, yourself? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's the only way I can live with myself. That's the only way I can feel, uh, be part of, or, 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 or love somebody, or, or think that they love me, you know? Um, by being a person that I'm not, you know? 1996, you agree to fight Chavez. Right. Godlike figure. Yeah, literally, yeah. Puts you on your butt when you're 15. You get uh -huh. a chance to now go in and you're gonna fight him. What's your preparation, thought process? Um, well, let me tell you, that experience was one of the most um, memorable experiences I've ever had. Not because I was gonna face him, but because of all the criticism that I received. I remember when we signed the fight. And I'm this kid from East LA um, who, who is not Mexican or not American. It's like, you know, like now people are reminding me like, you know, where are you from? Like you have no identity. Like you're not from Mexico. You're not, cause I, you, I was born over here, but you're not American enough, you know? because of your accent or because, you know? So I was caught in the middle and it's crazy because when I signed the fight to fight Julio Cesar Chavez, who is, I mean, literally this guy is, he's, he's the king and he's the Mexican national, you know? And uh, at that moment is when I first experienced um, criticism. I had a compound up in Big Bear that I, that I built um, to train and uh, I remember having to hire uh, bodyguards to surround the, the compound because I was getting death threats, um, even from the, own, from, from the Mexican government. I received a letter saying, because I was always proud of wearing the American flag and the Mexican eagle, you know, on my shorts. So they told me that if I wear that eagle, that Mexican eagle flag on my shorts, that they can, I guess, keep me away or like not let me into Mexico ever again. You know, the government sent me a letter. So I was like, hell with you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my roots, you know, this is who I am. It's like that fight divided cultures. It really did. I remember everybody that was born here in the US with, with, uh, uh, with Mexican parents, you know, um, were all for me and cheering me on and, and, but the Mexican national was against me, you know, like we're going, we're sticking to our king, our champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. And it literally divided cultures. How does that motivate you? It confused me first because I didn't understand why people are against me. Like I, I just didn't get it, you know, because when, since winning the gold all the way up to the Chavez fight, like, Jesus, I was adored, like, you know, and, uh, all of Mexico was against me and, and, and I just didn't understand it, you know? And so, but I stuck to my guns. I said, you know what? No, I'm, I'm proud to have Mexican roots and I'm proud to be born in the USA, okay? This is how it unfolded. And the blood bothering Julio as De La Hoya lands a vicious left hook. Chavez is will seeming to be sapped now as in the last minute of round four, He's calling the fight. The fight is over. The winner by technical knockout and new WBC super lightweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy. Yeah, so that was. At what, at what point are you thinking about when you're 15 and he drops you with that that uh, shot to your chin. I'm, I'm thinking about it, the, the whole camp, the three months of uh, what I was in Big Bear, I'm thinking about it in the dressing room. You know, I'm thinking, of, actually, when I, got, when I got in the ring, I swear to you, I got in the ring 
because Chavez is like, he's my hero, you know? So I, I was thinking, man, how can I get an autograph, you know, like, you know, <laughs> before or after the fight, you know? It was hilarious. But, but then you snap out of it and you're like, okay, in the zone, you know, you, you have to think about, you know, so, but it was, but that had, that actually happened. You know? And your business partner said that your, some of your uncles were actually upset that, yeah. how dare you beat yes. Chavez? Till this day, I have uncles who tell me, why did you beat my champion? Like, hey, I'm, I'm your, <laughs> your family, dude, <laughs> you know? You get your third weight division, so 140. So okay. you got three, yeah. now you got three more to go. Right. At least that's what you're thinking. That's what I'm thinking. So now I have to fight tougher guys. Um, I remember fighting Pernal Whitaker, who was at the time one of the slickest boxers around in the world. So you're fighting a southpaw. Right. I believe this may be the only time that you... That, that, that I faced a softball, yeah. yeah. So everything changes. Your, your whole training regimen, everything. I mean, now you have to think about um, uh, different combinations. You have everything that, I've, that I worked for, everything that I have, everything, like just throw it out the window. And now you have to rearrange everything. Your, your trainer has to adjust to, to, to the softball as well. Um, yeah, your footwork, everything, everything just changes. Everything is now like backwards, you know? Well, like, I was gonna say, yeah, like looking into a mirror. You know? How do you, what do you see when you see Pernell Whitaker, you know, facing a southpaw yeah. and it, how to counter it? It, it was just so awkward. It was awkward. It's like, it's like, it's like, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, it was just awkward. It was different. I wasn't used to it. That's why it made it so difficult, that fight there. And plus, he was the best pound for pound fighter in the world, you know? That, that made it tough. I was throwing the best shots. Uh, at Whitaker and and he was he was dodging every single I mean not he didn't dodge every single one because I did land quite a few um, but he did dodge a lot of punches and he just had beautiful head movement it was amazing I mean at one point he was literally on the ground so low I, I couldn't hit him because I, I couldn't get that low he was that low he was just <laughs> kind of like doing this it was it was it was pretty uh it was memorable it was memorable Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. And new featherweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> <like>, <laughs> uh, but let me, let me tell you, that was a close fight. That was a close fight. Next up, Felix Trinidad. Ah, Felix Trinidad. What's the preparation going into that fight? So, so now you have two fighters who are undefeated. We're in our prime. We're the best. This is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. We're, it, we're, it's, it's, we're the best in, in our weight class. And I remember we did, um, we did a press tour. So I remember I was thinking, how can I get in his head? And so I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to piss him off by not looking into his eyes, by never looking into his eyes, you know? By the fifth city, I, he would literally be so ticked off, like, look into my eyes, look into my eyes, come on, are you scared, look into my eyes. So, so what I was doing, I was psychologically like, kind of like getting into his head so he can get ticked, so ticked off that by fight night, he's gonna be so ticked off that he's gonna, he's gonna forget his game plan. He's gonna wanna knock my head off. And that was the plan. The plan was to stay on my toes, box him, not, not run, but just box him and land combinations, boom, boom, boom. And, I was, and the fight was so easy. But, it, but I remember the first nine rounds was a breeze. I mean, I, I would stay in front of him and throw combinations and move side to side just a bit and reset myself and then throw combinations again. So he couldn't find me. He was, he was confused, he was lost. But then, and when I went back to the corner, um, so we can start the 10th round, I went back to the corner and my trainer got mad at me. Like, you better stay away from him. You have the fight in the bag, just box the last three rounds, box him. You have the, you have the fight you want, that's it. They, there's no way you can lose. And sure enough, I did that. I boxed and I lost the fight. You can even see the look on your face. Yeah, I was- It's I a was, new look for you because yeah, you're I looking was, around going, I. How did I lose this? I was like, no way. I mean, come on. I was. Did you I, I think you lost that? No, no. no. After the fact? Look, when, when you're in the ring, you fight. When it's over, you know if you won or you lost. Like, you know it, you know? Yeah. I didn't feel like I lost that fight. 
What I found interesting was you lose to Trinidad, but your dad says he's proud of you. Yeah. Like, yeah. it took a defeat yeah. for him. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever try to analyze that? that um, he was more proud of me, how I handled myself, or did he yeah. tell you why? No, I mean, he never told me why, but yeah, he, he, actually, he actually said, um, you know, hey, son, you did good. You know, you did good. Um, you know, we're, we're proud of you. You know, he uses we're proud of you. Like, he couldn't say, I'm proud of you. He said, we're <laughs> proud of you. Damn it. We're getting um, closer. <laughs> we're inching closer, Oscar. <laughs> we're getting close. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but it's, it's interesting because it took a loss for him to, to say that. Um, and that's when you know there's unconditional love, you know, which is pretty cool. I mean, every time we see each other now, we can hug each other or I can hug him. Um, and, and, you know, we, it's like, hey, dad, you know, like, you know, but, but you can't say those words, you know, it's, 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 it's just, I don't know, it's. Do you tell him you love him? I do, all the time. But it's, so, it's like there's something there where he can't say it, you know, and, and so that day that he does, I, it's probably going to be the best day of my life. What did you learn about yourself after that loss? Um, that I'm not a quitter, that I'm not a quitter, because I could have easily just said, you know what? Forget this game. Let me um, let me move on to something else. Um, you know, but I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna once again pick myself up and uh, and try to raise my hand in victory. So we see this a lot of times. If you're around Sugar Ray Leonard, he's the nicest guy. Right. Get him in the ring. He wants to kill you. Yeah. You the same way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you, what, what happens when you take that step from outside the ring into the ring? Yeah. And what's it do to you mentally? It, um, there's, there's this switch. Um, I, remember, I remember I can be in my dressing room before a big fight and laugh and joke around. When they tell me 10 minutes, it's time to go, like my, something just comes over me. It, it, the face changes, the, 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 your mentality changes. Uh, you actually... You want to you wanna hurt the guy, you know? It's, it's kind of cruel. It sounds a little, uh, but, but you want to hurt him because he's gonna, he wants to hurt you first. So you have to do it first before he does it to you. Let's talk about the lead up to this with Vargas. This, this is a rivalry. This is real. It's this, a real rivalry. This isn't fake. We're no. going to stare down. No. He calls you a fake Mex a Mexican yeah. again. Yeah, it's made for TV. It's made, you know, it should be a movie. The villain, the good guy, you know, and, and he was a tough, tough guy, like a tough kid. Another undefeated fighter, tough as nails. Um, you bring in Floyd Mayweather Sr. Right, to train for, me. For that, yeah. for that fight. Best what? trainer I've ever had. Why? What he was teaching me is to be more of a, not more of a defensive fighter, but kind of to use my head a little more, you know? Because I would, my fights were a lot of action, you know? Like, I, I loved getting in there and just, just, oh, you know? And so he taught me to like just relax and you know brush off some brush off some punches and dodge you know bob and weave and box a little if you want to you know take a little break. <laughs> so we kind of we kind of matched perfectly you know I mean and and most important I mean we were like friends man. So your thought going into this of how do you prepare for somebody who you truly want to hurt. Like, it, is this different than any other fight you've had? Yeah, I mean, it, it's easier for me to train myself for, for, a fight, for a fighter like that because now you really want to hurt him. Because let me tell you, when that first bell rang, I wanted to charge him out there and just go and just pummel on him and try to knock him out. But what's going to happen? He's going to take my punches. I'm going to get out of my game plan, and he's, I'm going to get tired, and he's going to knock me out. Here we go. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of moments that had to feel really good it, it it felt really really good and then he tests positive for steroids after that fight yeah he did he did um what are you thinking i said to myself no wonder he, he <laughs> hit, hit hard damn like, no i'm telling the first round he had me completely out of the ropes i was like whoa this guy hits hard jesus it was probably one of my toughest most grueling fights i've ever been in I couldn't, I literally couldn't walk for like two, day, uh, two weeks after that. The birth of Golden Boy Promotions is now coming into play. Yeah. That yeah. You're, you're betting on yourself in pay-per-view. I don't know if anybody had ever done this before where a boxer says, mm -hmm. I'm going to take control. I'm going to promote my right. fight. So you're promoting 
and your performance. I have to be the fighter and I have to be the promoter. I have to think about the business, but yet I'm the fighter and I'm, I have to be at my very best. So it was, it, was, it was a difficult job to do. So you're going against two heavyweights, yeah. Bob Arum and Don King. Right. What did they say to you about getting into the business? Oh, they, 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 they try to sabotage my business. They try to do whatever it took. To, How would uh, they sabotage? Well, they, for instance, um, if, if we had fights, okay, um, sometimes they would go and talk to the fighter to maybe pull out, you know, pay him some money or do something, you know, to that nature. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a dirty business. You know, I found out the hard way. So you got Sturm coming up. That's your sixth title. I fought him um, to win another world title. And it was a close fight, but it was just tough. He was just a big kid, you know? I mean, here's a kid that's coming up from 130 pounds and fighting 160 pounds. And he was a big kid. And I just didn't feel like if I won, you know? Yeah. Because I was bloody. I was tired. I was, you know... And so, yeah, in that fight, I just, I, I, I felt, you know, like, uh, like, not that I felt like a loser, but I just felt like I didn't do enough. Did, what did it mean to you, though, to have titles in six different weight classes here? You start at 130 and... Right. Um, my thought was, um, after the fight, like, I don't feel comfortable calling myself a champion, you know? Let me go face the very best at 160, at, at the middleweight division. So I faced Bernard Hopkins. And it's funny because in the middleweight division, now you're facing big guys. So I remember going to the center of the ring. And so you, the referee tell, gives you the instructions. And I'm like this, and I'm looking at him like. So it's probably like this. Oh, yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> and I swear, I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> I was thinking in my head, what the hell am I doing here? And sure enough, he, was, he caught me with a good body shot in the ninth round, I believe. And he told me too, look, Oscar, you were, you were probably the toughest guy I've ever faced. I couldn't catch you, I couldn't hit you. You were fast, strong, but he knew where the opening was. And he caught me with a body shot. And I remember he hits me, I, I go down. There's a delayed reaction when you get hit to the body. You go down and you can't breathe. It's like you, you fold up like an accordion, you know? You're just, and you can't breathe, you can't breathe. And the more you try to breathe, the harder it gets. You know, that you can't, you, you close up, you choke up. And I remember staying down in the canvas and the referee's counting. Eight, nine, ten. In the 11th second, I was fine. So it's like one <laughs> second too late. You know, I was like, damn it, referee, you should have called, you should have counted a little slower. <laughs> Should you have gotten into the ring with him? No, no. I, I was over my head. I was over my head, but... But my competitiveness, you know, the, the person who I am, it's like I had to, I had to go in there with him because I, I was very prideful. I was very, I loved getting in there with the best. I loved challenging myself, you know? We have this quote that's attributed to you that says, I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror and know I took everyone on. That's one thing that I pride myself of in my career today is that I, I fought a lot of great champions, a lot of, you know, world champions. And um, I was never afraid of anybody. I was, I was always the one to, uh, to say, yes, I'll fight him, you know, no matter what, I'll just fight him. No matter what, if, if I win or lose, I'll fight him, you know? So I was always uh, one of those fighters that was um, just proud. I was proud of who I faced, who I fought. If I lost or won, I, I, I feel proud that I at least tried. Yeah, that quote to me is, is very, very important. I can, I can literally look in, in the mirror and say, wow, you know what, you did, you, you accomplished some pretty cool stuff. But you're 33 and you start to really contemplate retirement. Yeah, I did because, I mean, 33 today is, is obviously not old for a, for a boxer. Um, but in those days, I mean, we used to fight hard. And so all the wear and tear in my body, um, all the wear and tear, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the training, the fights. 200 amateur fights. 200 amateur fights. My body was just feeling like, it, my body's breaking down now, you know? But I'm competitive and I want more. Well, you got more because in 2007, Floyd Mayweather is there. Right. Floyd Sr. is not gonna train you. 
No, of course. Well, nah, that's his son. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, he's, he's yes. not gonna he's yeah. not gonna train me to beat up his son. No. I was hoping he would. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring um, in Freddie Roach. I bring in Freddie Roach. So now I'm facing Floyd, who again, it's like it's like the it's like that rivalry, the the villain and the good guy, you know. And Floyd, this is where Floyd is is is, is smart. He knows how to play that villain guy, you know. He uh, and you're promoting the fight. Yeah, and I'm promoting boy. the fight. Yeah, and I'm promoting the fight. And I have double duty, and it's like very distracting. I'm an old 33 year old boxer, and and but I still want to fight the best. You know, I still want to create mega events. 2.4 million buys on pay per view. Right. It's it's. Uh, How much it, money did that generate? Um, at the time, yeah, it was the record setting pay per view. Um, I think I think we generated something like close to all in, like close to 400 million. Yeah, in one night. So here's how it looked. Does it one last hurrah for a giant pot of money? Or will Delaware make good on his promise to keep on fighting even after this? And where does Mayweather go from this pinnacle after claiming that he's going to retire? They fight to the finish and please the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards. The winner by split decision and new WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy, Floyd Mayweather. Split decision. That's the yeah. only time but Floyd funny. ever had a split decision. Right, right. No, it was, it was, I gave him a good fight, but it's funny because we're like throwing at each other ah, ah, and the bell rings and we're like, ah, you know, <laughs> hey, come here, let's hug it out. <laughs> That's hilarious. Your sister said that Floyd Sr. went up to her after the fight and said you won. Yeah, yeah, which was pretty, pretty, I mean, Floyd Sr., he's, he's a very honest individual and, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he I guess he's, he said, yeah, look, your, your brother won. Did you I think felt, so? I just felt I did. I mean, it's, it's one of those fights where it could have gone either way, you know? Because um, sometimes you don't feel like you did enough. Right. Did you feel like you, you did I, enough? I felt I did enough, but I understood, and I, didn't, I realized, look, here's a fighter that is on his way out, and here's a fighter that is on his way in. And so I wasn't really, that's why I was just smiling at the end, like, okay, I, like, I'm done. If you didn't promote that fight with Mayweather, would you have pulled out? Probably, yeah, probably. Because there was too much, put the, put the money aside. For me, it's, it's about pride. For me, it was about, you know, man, I wanna, I wanna have a winning chance here, you know? You fight two more times, you go one and one, you get badly beaten by Pacquiao. Yeah. Why did you go into the ring with Pacquiao? Um, again, I, I loved fighting the very best. Pacquiao was coming up as, as the champion, you know, as, as the, uh, here you have this kid who is like walking right through anybody and everybody. You People know? try to talk you out of that? Oh, everybody did. It's like, why are you, why are you gonna fight Pacquiao? He's, first of all, he's younger than you, he's faster, he's strong. I had to lose, instead of gain weight, I had to lose like 10 pounds to fight in his weight class. And that drained my body at my age. So I was like, I literally was like a walking zombie when I walked into the ring. I like, I was out of it. I was, I lost so much weight. I was like, just, I lost a lot of muscle. And it was, it was, uh, I, I kind of, it was one of those moments where my pride got the best of me, you know? Yeah. In the first round after I sat down in the corner, I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> like. I have to take like 12 rounds of this, you know, until until like the ninth round, uh, my corner called it and said, you know, that's it. He's, he's like, he's punishing you too much. Like I never received that much punishment in my life. And they were like, just my think my brother or somebody just said, you know, what, that's it. It's over. You have no inkling of saying, you know what, let me go out a winner. Let me let me no. fight one more time. No, because I, I knew that I was done. People knew I was done, you know. And you're usually the last one to know? Yeah, I'm usually the last one, but <laughs> I, I, um, I stuck to my guns and I said, that's it. But it's crazy because till this day, Dan, till this day, I miss boxing. I, every single day of my life, I miss getting in the ring. It's, it's one of those fights that I have with myself every single day. Like, dude, that's it, it's over. 
Because there's some times that I've, I wake up in the morning, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it today. Like, I think it was like three years ago. I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to train. I want to fight again. Oh, no. Yeah, so I get, I, I wake up and it's like, you know, I mean, you can picture me, right? <laughs> Cracking the eggs and, you know, like Rocky, you know. The, and so uh, I'm running and I feel great. I did like six, seven miles. I feel great. In the afternoon, I go to a local boxing club there and people are like, oh my God, like, what's, what's he doing here? Like, you know. And uh, so I'm training. I feel great. The next morning, I swear I couldn't get out of bed. I was like, what the hell? It was hilarious. I couldn't get out of bed. I said, oh, that's it. No more. What did it feel like to go into the International Boxing Hall of Fame? Oh, my gosh. I went in with Felix Trinidad that year. And it was, it was the happiest moments of, of, of my boxing career, you know, sharing it with him because we had a history um, and now we can laugh at it, you know, and look back and look back at our fights and talk about it. I mean, till this day, like I can pick up the phone and call one of my rivals that I had back then and just, and just joke about our fights. It's, it's weird that separation though, when you yeah. think about it, Oscar, that I'm, I wanna kill you. Yeah. And then years later, I see you and I don't wanna kill you. Like I, that's business. Yeah. Like when we got into the ring, it was business. But how does it not stay personal? Once that bell rings, you know, it's like that. Okay, now you can smile. Now you can be who you are. You know, like now you can just let all those emotions out and just become who you really are. And that's just a person that is, you know, like a normal human being, you know. How proud would mom be of all of this? I, to this day, I think, you know, she, she's not here to, to live all these beautiful moments, you know. I think to myself, um, to this day, like, if she was around, how, how different would it have been, you know? Um, and, and, you know, I can shower her with gifts. I can buy her her own home. I can do this. I can do that, I, you know? Um, but I, I know that everything that happens in my life, it's because of her. I, I strongly feel that she's looking out for me till this very day. I strongly feel that, so... I feel, I feel that, um, I, feel, I feel blessed. I really do. What's next? Um, I'm going to continue growing Golden Boy Promotions. Um, about 10 years ago, I got involved with Major League Soccer. Um, so I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna focus a lot of my time in growing the sport. I think, I think Major League Soccer is on the rise, like there's no tomorrow. I mean. Thank God for the soccer moms, you know? <laughs> Thank God, because man, all these kids that are playing soccer, and man, it's like, it's incredible. So I'm I excited for that. Got some fun questions here. All right, here we go. <laughs> what other sport do you wish you could have played? Uh, golf. Golf, yeah. Are you superstitious? Uh, no. Never before a fight? Never before nothing. a fight, Nev nothing. Any regrets? None. Whatsoever. I think everything, everything that's happened in my life happens for a reason. Build me the perfect boxer. Take yourself out of the picture. Okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> um, I think um, Floyd Mayweather's skills, Mike Tyson's power, um, Muhammad Ali's intelligence, and Sugar Ray Leonard's footwork. Ooh, that's a good combination, right? <laughs> you and don't my want, heart. You don't want <laughs> hey. we'll, we'll end with that because you showed heart. You Thank showed you. grit. You showed uh, what a champion's all about. Thank you. Mom's proud. Yeah. And I know Dad's proud, too, oh, yeah. in his Absolutely. way. The pride of East L.A., Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.